Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies, a podcast about people sharing extraordinary stories about how music has impacted their lives. Good evening. Welcome to Music Junkies. I hope you guys are awesome today. I'm your co-host. I'm just kidding. I am your host. Annette, but I'm looking over here. T-Bone is joining us once again off camera because he's nervous. And then we have these two wonderful guests tonight. And this is Glenda and Peter, good friends of mine. We're in business together and uh, I'm going to harass them. <laughs> so welcome to the show today, you guys. I'm excited to have you. Before I get started, I always like to ask, what was your experience putting your playlist together? And then I wanted to understand if you were to describe your playlist to somebody, how would you describe it? Well, putting our playlist together, we just kind of sat outside and put it together. Um, the meaning of the playlist, a lot of the songs on there have meaning to our marriage, um, when we got engaged, and our, our life as we grow as a couple. Yeah, yeah. yeah ditto. Peter, ditto. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's just uh, bringing back, um, you know, the, the way we've grown up together. Yeah. You know, you get your ups and downs. And uh, we're going to go over that. Is what brings it up. Yeah. We're going to go over your guys' ups and downs as well. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be good. Okay. First song, though. I haven't heard this song in a long time. Right? The Lady in Red. Right? Beautiful song. So I'm curious, why do you so, love that song so much? So the Lady in Red is probably the, the very first song that we, uh, I proposed. Oh. And uh, I believe you had a red yes. dress on. Yep. And she looked just absolutely gorgeous back then. And um, that song was just the perfect fit to the way she walked, the way she was. And, and the way she dressed as well. I just, we just fell in love with that song. Wow, that's romantic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did you guys meet? We were set up on a blind date to go out to New Year's Eve. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually supposed to go with his brother, Carlos, and he was supposed to take another girl by the name of Glenda, mm -hmm. and they, she, bailed. she bailed. So <laughs> Carlos says, well, you take my date. Um, I'll stay home and thank goodness he did because um, his brother is nothing like him yeah so and um, I come home and my mom knew Peter for quite a while before I did and because I worked with your dad with the same company yeah before I realized that you had a daughter first impression of Peter when you seen him I fell in love with him immediately yeah he was first. the best gentleman I've ever had he open the car door for me, help me get in. It, it, I fell in love immediately. And I was a very European. I just came back from uh, Holland on a vacation. Yeah. And um, uh, she just loved the way I, I dressed because I, I, I like the European clothing. And that's yeah. the way I am. So how many dates did it take before you sealed the deal? Uh, I would say probably uh, we went together for a good half a year and then we decided to Move in together. Oh, I'm yeah. talking about the other deal. Oh. <laughs> That's well, a commitment deal. Well, we don't care about that one. We want to know was it date one? No. No, it was um, probably date four. Um, everybody thinks it was date two. Oh, um, and why do they think that, Glenda? Because my truck was parked out in front of his house in the morning, <laughs> but I, I literally passed out on his couch. Um, yeah, after a party, that, yeah. after his, his birthday party, I passed out on the couch, yeah. and um, so everybody thought it was was um, day two, but no, it was probably about day four. Yeah. Who made the first move? I think it was probably me. Yeah. Because yeah. no. I was kind of a shy person there, you know. I was I was a type of person that never really wanted to be attached. I just wanted to uh, to see the world and, and do my own thing, but. After I, I did my uh, trip through Europe, I was ready to settle down. Yeah. So it was just perfect timing. So how long have you guys dated and then been married? Okay. Um, 
Well, actually, I'm going to tell you when it was, because I do remember now. We lived in Rainbow Lake, and we went to Peace River for the weekend. And we get to the hotel, and the lady turns to us and says, do you want a room with two double beds oh. or one double bed? <laughs> and, and we stood there and looked at each other, and we says, well, we'll take two double beds. <laughs> um, well, we used one one night and the other one the other night. That's so okay. so um, that's when we sealed the deal. Um, but we we met um, New Year's Eve of 85, no, no 86. Six. Yeah. Um, New Year's Eve of 87, he proposed to me and September 9th, or pardon me, 5th of 87, we got married. So your wedding anniversary is Tyler's birthday. Welcome. Oh. And we do the clean bed, dirty bed thing too. <laughs> We always get two, but we're like, can we get two queens, please? <laughs> they don't really have two kings, depending how fancy you get. Yeah. But I like the way that you guys do the clean bed, dirty bed. That's an no. important thing. No. So. so happily married for how many years? It'll be 33. Wow. Crazy. Impressive. Impressive. This next song I love, right? And I love that you have Bette Midler doing it, because I love her version of it too, The Rose. Song that song, um, my maid of honor, um, who rest her soul, has, has passed away um, at a very young age. But her husband, sorry, her husband um, sang that song okay. at our wedding while we signed the oh, really? the registry. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Um, it's just a song, my mom really liked it, and it's one that I always played on the organ, and so we picked that one, and, and Dan sang it at our wedding. That's beautiful. Yeah. So you play the organ? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not Peter's organ either. <laughs> the typical well, organ. <laughs> not right now, but you have played Peter's organ, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> So, is that the only musical instrument do you, that you play, or do you play anything else? No, just just that. Good for you. Are you really good at it? I used to be, but um, I haven't played for years. Um, we got rid of ours, and we still uh, have the old uh, organ sitting in our shed. No. It's probably about forty years old. We should break it out when we go there next time. It's huge. It's dirty. Um, it probably yeah. I don't even know if it would work. It might be filled full of mice. I don't know. <laughs> But you can't, you can't give them away. Yeah. So How about you, Peter? Sense. Do you play a musical instrument? Um, or any musical I, talent? Well, I like the drums. And okay. I like the bass guitar. So the drums, it was just excellent for me because when I get home from work, I like to just beat the living crap out of the drums. And I got good at it yeah. with the rhythm and whatnot. But it was a stress relieving uh, way of getting rid of it. So uh, I like the drums. The bass guitar, I really like to, uh, to play that. I like the deep rumble yeah. sound of the bass. And when I bought my first uh, bass guitar, I know, I remember I boosted up my uh, amplifier and I made more speakers in the amplifier. <laughs> and I plucked the lowest string I could possibly find. And I turned the sound up so loud that the windows in the front living room, which was a huge picture window, was vibrating. <laughs> and I can remember my mom yelling at me, turn that. <laughs> you're gonna shatter the windows. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, I, I, those are the two instruments I, I do like. My favorite instrument is the saxophone. Yeah. I did buy it up. I never ever did uh, learn how to play it, but I love the saxophone. I played the saxophone in grade six. Yeah. I was a pretty big mm -hmm. deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think my parents wanted to choke me because it's like <laughs> awful learning how to play the saxophone. <laughs> it's a like, yeah, I didn't want to go the clarinet. And and, there, and we lived in a small town, there was only one drummer. And this guy named Mark Ewan, geez, I remember his name, how crazy is that? Yeah. Stole the drums from me. <laughs> Hate you, Mark. Hate you. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. This next song. So that is one of my songs there. So. I like that song because it gave me a, a peace of mind. It's who I was. I was a, a before I met uh, Glenda. I was a, 
a lonely person. Not lonely in the sense, you know, lonely from people. It's just that I did my own thing. And, and I was always raised with a pretty rough life. You know, my, my uh, parents and my brothers and sisters, they didn't care about anything. All that I did was work, work, and work. And my way of getting away from work and getting away from family is I just had my own uh, bedroom. I never lived in the same house as what uh, my parents did. At age 13, I had my own little shop. And that's where I played my music, I did my photography. I, so that, that song, Melancholy Man, is actually based on that because I'm just a, a, a lonely person at that time, right? So yeah. that's what meant a lot to me. So you said you played photography, or you, you did photography. Do you still do photography? Right. You know, I got so good at photography that uh, the courses that they were providing in school, they wouldn't let me take it because I knew more than what the instructors did. I experimented with uh, enlargers, uh, lenses, and I made some very, very unique uh, photographs just using a different kind of lenses and, and doubling up on various lenses to get different kind of backgrounds. Wow. So I was very good at it, and I, I got into making movies. Oh, wow. So my life goal was to be a filmmaker. So that's what I did, and then I actually uh, did a lot of nature movies wow. uh, on the farm. So we had, back then I had a, an old-fashioned Super 8 movie camera. And um, yeah, I, I did some uh, amazing uh, wildlife uh, photography. Is that what mostly you took pictures of, was nature and wildlife? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Do you have any of that stuff around the house that you, like is it hanging on the wall? Actually, yeah, I still have some old uh, Super 8 movies. Really? That I found, and I can't remember where it was, but it was a little real, and uh, it had uh, a movie of uh, uh, a beaver coming out of the lake. And at that time there, I couldn't understand why is this a beaver walking down the road? So I, I uh, stopped the truck and I went out to film him and try to bring him back to the lake, but yeah. he wouldn't cooperate with me. So I grabbed him <laughs> and tried to throw him in the truck. Oh. At that time there, he uh, took a big chunk out of my leg, so I got really mad. So we had a fight, I basically had a fight with this beaver. And, and I won the battle because I did throw him in the truck. And he, you know, a beaver is such a solid animal. You could not squeeze your hands into their hide. It's just wow. wood. They're just solid. But anyway, I managed to throw him into the truck, and I didn't drive more than 10 feet, and he jumped out. Really, so, eh? That's the type of person I was. I wasn't afraid of anything. I would yeah. choose anything that... that well, I just gotta get a call here. Yeah. <laughs> Beavers are tough animals. Yeah, and um, they can be mean. I agree, you I know, agree. Like, uh, on, on our farm, we had uh, 1,600 acres, and we had four lakes on it. Jeez. And uh, two of the lakes had a lot of the beaver in there. And I used to sneak up with them with a canoe and just grab them by the tail. And then let them pull the canoe all over. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so I was kind of a, I was kind of a, a, a wild person there, too. So yeah. I wasn't afraid of anything. Where'd you grow up, Peter? Um, well, we immigrated from uh, Holland, Amsterdam. We moved with five kids and my parents to Canada. And Dad got uh, sponsored as being a carpenter in Canada. He had a choice of being uh, uh, sponsored in one of the two countries, either Australia or uh, Canada. So they chose Canada. And then we flew from Holland to Montreal. Then we grabbed a plane or a train and we went across Canada to Alberta and we landed in uh, Calgary. Oh, and nice. That's where Dad was working. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But you grew up really in Rochester. Yeah. 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 So at the age of six, my summer holidays was working with Dad building houses. Yeah. So I never really had vacation like most kids have. Yeah, our childhood. I knew how to cut uh, lumber and how to use nails and hammers and wow. measure at that age. And it's nowadays crazy. we wouldn't even give kids that age an exact away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, or a fork to eat with because <laughs> they don't even know what the hell they're doing. Let's be honest. So I generation. basically learned a trade at a very young yeah, age. And I, I would say. You know, and I don't regret it because I love, still up to this day I love building. 
Yeah, and your talent shows all over your house, yeah. right? We've been to your house and all the stuff and amazing stuff that you built. It's exactly, it's, it's beautiful. There's never no such thing as you can't do. That's right. I love that yeah. that attitude. That's a great attitude. This next song, um, I have not heard this song in probably ten years. So, I was I already told Glenda that I was driving with this song, but I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Yeah. That was a, a happy song, you know. Yeah. It, it had an excellent beat, and I love the guy's uh, way of singing and, and uh, the lyrics in the songs. Go west. Yeah. You know? and that's what we always want to do. Go west. And um, it was, a, you know, a fast. It was a great song. Um, and and the girls, it's um, we brought our kids up with music. Like when I was pregnant, we listened to music. That's all we did. We listened to music. We never watched TV. And I think both of our girls came out dancing and, and listening to all different kinds of music. And that song, um, I can remember the girls just giving her around the house with it. So it's just become a song that we've always yeah. listened to. Yeah, I love that song. I don't know where I learned that song, but it was automatic when I heard it. I'm like, oh my God, I haven't heard this for so long. So I was like, this is awesome. This is a part that I love about doing these playlists because it brings back memories for me too. And then I have a little kind of playlist on mine that I'm just like adding people's songs that maybe I have never heard before that I love. So yeah, your playlist is, is so good. So Peter, is that where you got your style from, was from Europe? Because you do have a very unique style, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I always love the European stuff. I mean, uh, the, the way they uh, dress, the way they speak, um, the way they... Uh, have their interior houses, you know, like everything is uh, so different. I mean, European style, it's hard. I don't know how you explain it, but if you go into a house where there's European, you can tell the difference just because of the curtains and the decoration on there and then and just the way I dress. Yeah. You know? Is that one thing, that. is that one thing, Linda, that attracted you to Peter was no. the confidence in his style? Because I feel like you're very confident in your style. Right? Not a lot of people can pull off a style like that. It's it's rare that guys are very confident in, you know, a different type of style. And you're very confident. Yeah, and, and you know what? Uh, still up to this date, I still get a lot of compliments from strangers. And, you know, they just love the way I, I dress. A lot of my clothing, I still buy from uh, European shops. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes a little frustrating. I can dress up and do what, do anything. And they never recognize me. They only recognize him. So when you're getting ready, who takes the longest to get ready? I do. <laughs> that's good still. <laughs> See, that's well, a good thing. Yeah. If, if, if Glenda said you, then, you know, we... But then we got problems. Then we got some problems. As far as a question on is that what attracted me to him, um, yes, that's one of the things. Because we were over at a mutual friend's place um, when he got back from Europe. So he had... Um, all European clothing on and and he walked in the door and it was like the drool I had to keep wiping, <laughs> right and the, the nice thing about it we really hadn't we had gone out for New Year's Eve but we hadn't spent any other time together and he walked in the door took his shoes off and walked right over and sat down beside me and held my hand and it was like yeah okay, remember those this... days the platform shoes I had them too no <laughs> so was he taller than you wearing the platform shoes? Like when I didn't you had know, yours man. on and he had his on, who was taller? Well, I'd like to feel that I was taller. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've always been about the same height. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> what are three things, Peter, that you love about Glenda? Um, her personality. Yeah, her uh, uh, the love of uh, the grandkids and, the, and now two daughters. Yeah. And, and I love that, uh, you know, we grow old together. So, yeah, those are the three main things. And what is one thing that you don't love about Linda? Uh, I don't want to say don't love. You know, like maybe a little bit of a pet peeve. I don't know. I, really, when you're married for so many years, you just tend to 
ignore it at times. Right? Yeah. So I honestly, I really can say if there's anything I really hate about her or don't like about her. Yeah, I think it's a strong. I mean, there's things. I think the things that you know we both have a little bit of a pet peeve about one another, but didn't really uh, um, talk about. I don't think so. How about you, Glenda? What are three things that you love about Peter? Um. The biggest one is is he was always involved in our girls' lives. Um, Peter was always a big part of everything we did with the kids. And um, he's just always been compassionate. Yeah. You know, he's always been there for me um, through thick and thin, um, sickness and in health. And um, he just, he's just, Foot loose and fancy free, and mm -hmm. and I love that. You know, we have a style together that that is ours. Yeah. We've built it ourselves. Like yeah. you know, our home mm -hmm. is 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 us. So you know, um, all of our friends say I couldn't imagine saying um, Glenda's coming over or you know Peter's coming over. It's it's Peter and Glenda. There's there's just no. Um, not in a world without the two of us. And and we're, we're always open-minded. Like, you know, we never hold anything against one another. So, you know, if I'm out with my friends or I go out to watch the strippers, there's no um, hesitation. We just go. And vice versa, you know, she goes out with her friends. And watches and, the strippers. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. We, yeah. We, we were never jealous of one another because we know we always come home and we go to bed. Right? So we have that very much of an open uh, concept and we kind of bring our kids up that way. But I used to, we used to have girls night out up in, in Cold Lake all the time and we go out to the bar and, and I'd come home and I'd be well well um, indulged in the alcohol and, and, up on strippers. Yeah. and he'd ask me, he'd say, so how much money do you still have in your pocket? And I says, um, same amount that I went with. And he, he's like, that a girl, you got them buying you drinks again. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. just stuff like that. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. This next song, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Because it's a great song. Because when we got together there, I was also a DJ. Oh, okay. Right here, living in uh, Rainbow Lake. And with my sound system and the type of music, I was always the guy that went on the New Year's uh, Eve uh, parties for DJ. And that was one of the songs that we absolutely loved because when people are just sitting around uh, talking, I crank that song up as loud as I possibly can, and all of a sudden the floor is just covered with people. People are jumping and dancing and having a great time. Mm -hmm. So that was a song that is a party song for us. Yeah, that's a great song. Yeah. And when we lived in Rainbow Lake, we had um, 12 to 14 hour drive when we come out of there. So, so the vehicle was always full of cassette tapes at that time. Yeah. And that's one of the songs that was always playing in yeah. the vehicles. So, yeah. you know, we, it, a lot of our music yeah. comes from our drives back and forth from Rainbow Lake. Yeah, cranky yeah. music, cranky beer, and away we go. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Road pop. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Different so. kind of road pop, though. Yeah. <laughs> I always say that to Tyler, road pop, and he's like, cracks a beer. I'm like, no, like the other kind of road pop. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are moved out, we're allowed to do that stuff. Yeah. So, um, Glenda, I'd like to know two of your pet peeves. If you only have one, that's fine. But if you do have two, two please. Pet peeves. Please share. Um, I don't listen. No, no, we're not with each other. Just with. I guess my my biggest women. my biggest pet peeve is um, how people can can talk about somebody behind their back and and um, be so nice to them to their face. It's always been a huge pet peeve of mine. Um, if you've got a problem with me, come and tell me what your problem is. Don't talk about me behind my back. So it, that's one of my my biggest pet peeves. And um, I, don't, I really don't have any other ones. Mine's good. Peter, how about yourself? Do you have any pet peeves? 
Uh, how should I explain it? Uh, let's see. Really, I don't know. Uh, what pops up in the mind is uh, the appearance of, of other people. It, it seems like, you know, it just gets, life gets more complicated every year. And that peeve is, is that, uh, you know, people just don't have patience. And I wish people would have more patience, and, you know, just slow down and just enjoy what they have. Yeah. But it doesn't happen nowadays, you know, everybody's in a rush. When do we start slowing down and start, you know, living life as what we should be, you know, happy? Yeah. That's great life advice. I always ask that life advice question at the end, and, mm -hmm. and that's a good pet peeve to have, that people are not slowing down and, and enjoying life. Yeah. I mean, you see it at work, you see it in uh, stores, you see it yeah. in driving, you know, just, there's no patience at that point. So I, I would say that's my biggest pet peeve, is, is that. Yeah. This next song, Back in Your Arms Again, right? It's a beautiful song. I feel like I could see you guys dancing. quite a bit when we were going out together and, and uh, we played it at home a lot. I'm a I'm a huge country western fan. Huge. And so when when we met he's more rock and I'm more country. So um, depending on whose vehicle and it was mine for the first <laughs> part of it because um, his was was broke down so um, he got to listen to country music and instead of playing the twangy stuff and all that i would always play the upbeat so the mavericks yes have been a big part of our our relationship and um our daughters are huge into country music so so it just what was your best country, country music festival show concert that you've ever seen um you know what i don't think i've ever been well yeah i have um I mean, we, we used to go to Big Valley Jamboree all the time, and but ask me the artists and the music that was playing, um, I don't really remember it because yeah. usually alcohol took over more than, more than that. But um, somebody that I missed when he was here, and I really like him just for the entertainment and the, and the style on the, on the um, stage that he has is Garth Brooks. Yeah. So, um, but really any country music like um my grandmother was was huge into charlie pride um we listened to him lots in, in growing up and i don't know i listen to any music yeah the country is my favorite how about you peter do you want to add to that or just because you're obviously came in more of a rocker than yeah. a country yeah. person who was who were kind of you know, did you did you have a favorite concert that you went to, a rock concert? Did you see a lot of concerts? No, you know, that, honestly, not a lot. Um, I think one of the, the, the bands that I've grown up with, and they were actually in our neighborhood, and we became good friends with our parents and, and their parents, it was the Stampeders. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, the Stampeders was a big part of my life, and still is, you know, their, their music. Um, so we did see their concert and I quite enjoyed it uh, or any other kind of concerts uh, country music you know I'm okay with it um, I think one of the uh, good artists that I really enjoyed was uh, Kenny Rogers yeah me too right? you kind of have that Kenny Rogers vibe though right mm -hmm. you have blonde hair yeah. mustache well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> blonde <Just> hair <laughs> <laughs> all right next song Go Gentle, Robin Williams. And we heard a lot of this at your property the other day, right? So obviously you love that oh. artist. Yeah, um, I, I've never really known Robbie Williams and then we bought a, bought a DVD of him. And um, I'm a real eyes person, I love people's eyes and his eyes just just melt me every time I see Not his hips, just no, his eyes. Just his eyes. No one is bum. I like <laughs> eyes and bumps. Bum. Eyes and bumps. Mm -hmm. So when you look at somebody, you just like quick glance, and then you'll excuse me, turn around. 
<laughs> and I and I met somebody that that you know I'm married to somebody that doesn't have a bum. Never has. And it's like I've tried I've tried any pair of pants I can like Wranglers. It doesn't bring his ass out. He yeah. doesn't have one. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, the, the I just I like Robbie Williams. Yeah, I, I yeah. Love his he music. has good uh, lyrics. When you really listen to his songs, it, it really uh, explains a lot, and and you kind of reflect on, on the words that you know the way are like this as well. So yeah, he was he was a good uh, artist. Yeah, he's got a great stage presence. Isn't yeah. It? I want to ask you guys some quick questions here. Um, what's the best thing about your guys' sex life? Um, hmm, good, good question. The best thing is, uh, is when we have it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that, that's not. It, it, it's um, for years through my thyroid issue, and a lot of people don't know this, but um, when when your hormones are all out of whack. Um, Sex life is not is not an option because you've got two two I don't know inner circles an inner circle and an outer circle and um, your the inner part does not stretch to allow you so it tears and so now it's um, when we're able to have it it's it's fantastic and yeah. um, it's starting mine is starting to come back as I get my thyroid under control, um, that's starting to, to work again. So, but we so, had good sex. I mean, uh, spur in a moment. Oh, we're Where's kind of the craziest place you ever had sex before? Uh, Are you pulling like people? We, we pulled over. Did you have sex in our driveway? No, not tonight. <laughs> No. <laughs> Maybe one time. No, we were driving one day and we just had the urge and we just uh, jumped out of the vehicles and had a quickie and uh, went back to driving. I well, didn't hear that you guys are or we did, having uh, sex on boats while people are in yeah. the yeah. Oh yeah, we did that. Yeah. We went canoeing, that, went yeah. canoeing one day and um, found a little island and jumped on there. We had to clear the twigs and that, but I think mm -hmm. I think he still got one up his butt when we were doing that. So. <laughs> Who is uh, the better kisser? <sighs> no, I think we're both the same in that uh, respect. I don't think uh, either one of them are either one of us are better. I mean, uh, long kisses, yeah, we used to do that. And now it's just, uh, you know, as you get older, it's just a nice quick peck and I love you and... Uh, Who said I love you first? I think that would have to be me. Yeah, that yeah? would be you. Yeah. Did you reciprocate when she said that? Or were you like, thank you, have a good no, day? No, no, I always say I reply back. Yeah, <laughs> I love you too. That's not good to do when a guy does that, just if any guys are listening, right? If a girl says, I love you, yeah. you probably should. Not if it's like three days in. You know, we still say it up, uh, up, up to this date there, you know, we call one another and we always say I love you, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Who's I, the tidiest? Sorry to interrupt you. Who's the messiest and who's the tidiest? You know, it, it, I'll probably say I'm probably the tidiest. I, I have a, a little bit of an OCD when it comes to that. Like it's got to be in place. But as far as messy, no, I don't we're, like we're both about the same. Yeah. You know, we don't like mess. We don't like clutter. Well, I shouldn't say we don't like clutter. We have lots of clutter, but it's it's got to have its spot. That's our it's clutter. It's got to be in its spot. Yeah. What is one thing, Peter, that Glenda would end up in jail for? Um, yeah, that's a good question. What would go to jail? <laughs> if it I was know. back then, I would say you probably would beat up a person. So assault? Yeah, I would say that would be one of them. Um, one of them? There's, there's a couple. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, she had a problem with the speed. She liked to get those speeding tickets all the time there. And it got to the point where she was almost over her demerits. So, you know, that's probably as close as that she's going to get. Speeding to and know. assault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a. a so she might beat up the cop who pulls her over. Well, that mm -hmm. could be her melt them off. I have one person in mind that, that um, if I ever seen him, he could, he could send me to jail quite quickly because I think I would, I would kill him. <laughs> So, all right, next yeah. song. 
no matter what. This beginning of the song kills me. <laughs> I wanted to literally call you Ty when this song came up because I've never heard this song before. I was like, am I hearing something? <laughs> I saved it just for the beginning of this song. I loved it. Uh, I think the tone of the music um, really got my attention and, and the lyrics on it. And when you really listen to it, it kind of puts us two together as well. The thing, ever since we moved down, down to Calgary and YouTube is so big, um, we just find songs on, yeah. on YouTube that we like and, and we end up making playlists. Yeah. So and that's just one of them that, that ended up on there. Like our grandson is is huge. He's going to be in the music industry. I, I have no doubt in my mind because um, at six years old, he sings and and he dances to music all the time. So there's no doubt by mind yeah, he's he, going to be in the music industry. Because we raise our kids with music. No. Their kids are in the same way. When yeah. they come over to our place, they have grandkids. And, uh, you know, they, they have their little temper tantrums. So then they just crank on this song and all of a sudden it's silence. And now they know the words off by heart and they stand there and they sing with the song. Yeah. What's the best part about being grandparents um more than the kids uh, no as you as you know with around our place um everything's for the kids we do everything for the kids we don't get them that much we don't see them that much but when they do come to our place it's going to be memorable and um just cuddles and and the love that they have. I mean, they've got unconditional love for you. Well, that, and that's that's the thing, right? Uh, we want to raise our grandkids that they would always remember us, good times and bad times. Yeah. When you compare it to my family, I never had that. You know, we didn't have that uh, uh, closeness. We didn't have that love. It was always fight, fight, fight. You know, my parents, they were at each other's throats. They were ready to kill. My mother, dad would always try to blow his brains out, shoot himself, or try to kill himself in the field with the equipment. So, you know, uh, I was always on edge, and I was always the person in between to break up the, the, the fights and, and the, the anger between them. So, I didn't want that to be uh, our grandkids to, to see any of that, yeah. or our daughters to see any of that. I mean, yes, we're not perfect by any means. We had our battles. You know, as we get older and we were married, as you know, as time goes by, but you know, like any marriage, you have to work on it. No marriage is perfect. Yeah, for sure. But I love that you said, Peter. You know, the environment that you grew up in, instead of how a lot of people do, kind of use that as a victim role and stay in that kind of environment or go create that environment yeah. again. Which you were very much like myself, where. We both, both grew up in bad environments and we did whatever we could not to, to not be in that environment exactly. again, getting out young, right, like I did. And then um, when we did have children, really fighting against what somebody would say nurture versus nature, right, where we fought against that to create a different life and for our children. And it's worse than listening to a gunshot, you know, out in the bush there that, you know, your dad would try to blow his uh, uh, brains out. Left marks on his uh, forehead, and then you know it's it's a difficult uh, lifestyle. And I always said I will never be my parents, no matter what. Never. Peter and I um, had this conversation before we were even married. I mean, my dad was was um, abusive. He was an alcoholic, and he was very abusive to my mom and that. And we both said we we don't want to be like our parents. We want to take the good parts that our parents have taught us, but the bad parts, we didn't want to have it a part of our lives. And and we have done that. You know, our girls um, really don't even know a lot about the bad parts of their grandparents because we blocked it out of our heads. And um, here just recently, um, with what our oldest daughter's going through, Peter has, has told her a little bit about the abuse that he went through. And, you know, it's, it's 
they're shocked because we never ever brought that in. Mm -hmm. We always tried to show them the good side or teach them the good side about right. their grandparents, but not the bad side. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, my dad was very abusive and, um, you know, my girls didn't know that. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, they only need to know what they, what they need to know. Yeah, and absolutely. And then when you experience something or they experience something, it's way easier to be relatable that you're able to bring those stories up instead mm -hmm. of telling them everything about your life growing up when maybe mm -hmm. you don't even really need to tell them. Yeah. So that yeah. is a great way to... And I always said I will never be like my dad. Mm -hmm. I will never be like my mother. Or I will never be like my brothers and sisters. So I, I left, never slept or been in the same house at an age of uh, uh, 13. And I didn't know my parents for 15 years. So my two daughters have never known their grandparents. Yeah. yeah. Christine was 15 years old, their oldest one. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's when I, um, when I was drinking and I, and he finally said it was affecting our marriage. Um, I knew I had to quit because, um, I was doing what my dad did to my yeah. mom, and that wasn't going to happen. So, I mean, I just... How long have you been sober for then? It was 10 years in January. Oh, well, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't miss it. So, no. You get a really bad hangover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I got hangovers till I got sober. <laughs> oh my god, the hangovers. Mm -hmm. Nightmare. Great song. Taking a little out to load here. These your your guys' songs are like the intro is like 85 minutes. <laughs> this is well, I see a chance. I've never oh, I think it's you. This is the bird. Right? That's what you said. When we were when I was listening to this song, you said, is this Christopher Burke? No. And it was, Tyler. It was. This is it, Christy Berg is just a huge part of our family. I had never heard him, never played his songs until I met Peter. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, the girls have, he's a big part of the girls' lives. He's been a big part of our lives. And um, on our lives. 30th wedding mm -hmm. anniversary, the girls, um, he just so happened to be coming to Calgary. And the girls bought us tickets to oh, go wow. and see him. And it was just fantastic. Like um, he's a great entertainer. He's his music is tells stories. Yeah, he's a storyteller, but in a music form, and uh, that's what really intrigued us because he he could sing about you know uh, a Lebanese girl. Yeah. Or the lady in red. Or um, there's so many great songs that he has, but we just like. The way he tells the stories. That's good. I want to play a little game with you as we get ready to close. So each of you grab your chalkboard. Um, and I just want to ask some questions. So you each have to write your answer on there and then we'll go from there. What is Glenda's bra size? Don't be looking either. She's going to write the answer. <laughs> Don't be looking. Let's see. Let's see, show your answers. Holy cow. <laughs> D6. Peter said D6. It's a 40 DB. <laughs> well, there's, there's something with a D and there's something with a 6. So as long as there is a D in there. Yeah. And then, are you ready, Glenda? What is Peter's shoe size? Let's see, let's see. Oh, I gotta write mine. You gotta write it down because. It looks like a nine. No. Good job. You guys know you're getting on the right track here. First impression <laughs> a little off. What was the first movie you guys saw together? First what? Movie you guys saw together. Oh my god, she's writing. Movie saw together. I don't know. Uh, first movie. Hmm. I can't see right now. You want to show them? I'm going to put down. Fritz the cat. Footloose. Oh, it's Top Gun. 
Top Gun. Oh, yeah. Well, that was close. <laughs> it was the same, same kind of hero. <laughs> All right. What is Glenda's favorite ice cream, and what is Peter's favorite ice cream? Is this true? Yeah? Chocolate and vanilla. You guys are so cute. <laughs> so cute. Okay, one more song. Another. Another Robbie. This is not him, eh? No, I did So why do you love that song so much? <clears throat> well, I would say it is. He sang that song going down the street, and he grabbed everybody's attention. So I look at him as um, a person that got people together. And I like the way uh, people looked at him. Yeah. You know, like um, the way people look at me when I dress, you know, yeah. the way I do. He's, he's just, he's such an entertainer. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's not there to, to show off or anything like that. He's there to entertain you and his songs just, just bring that out. And I would yeah. definitely like to ride a float like that down there, <laughs> down, down, down Calgary and the bike and, uh, that'd be, my that'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, so, you know, please don't sing different. no. <laughs> please don't so sing. So you're not a good singer? No, I'm not a good singer. Glenda, are you a good singer? No. No. no, both not good singers. Absolutely not. No. Shower singer. Good, good listeners. No. Yeah, bad singers, good listeners. No. Um, so what would you do right now if you found out Glenda was pregnant? I would say what? <laughs> <laughs> I would too because um, you have to have some certain parts for that, and, and I don't have them. So, so you know, I'd be famous. You would I'd be famous. famous. With no tubes and ovaries, I'd be That'd famous. Be amazing. But let's say you did have tubes and ovaries, and you just found out you were pregnant. I would, I would have accepted. Yes, yeah. it, it would be upsetting, um, but what are you going to do? Yeah. You've got to go through with it. You've got to have a child. Our girls would be ecstatic, I think. Yeah. They'd be shocked at first. But. <laughs> They would take their sister, and you would take the grandkids. You guys could, uh, <laughs> trade off, yeah. right? Go spend some time with your sister. We'll take the grandkids. <laughs> It'd be a lot. It'd be it a lot. Would. Yeah. So, closing question. Um, I'm curious from both of you. So, whoever wants to go first, but I just want you. What would you say to your, ten, you know, your 20, 30, 40 year old self, if you could give yourself some words of wisdom, or just somebody that's listening, some some life wisdom. Who wants to go first? Um, the biggest thing is, is in marriage, you, you have to communicate. And if you don't have an open line of communication and trust with your spouse, you're not gonna make it. So just make sure that, that you know, you're trustworthy and you tell them everything. You know, our girls will say, will say something to me and they'll say, but but mom, don't tell dad. So now I say, don't tell me if you don't want me to tell dad because we don't hide anything from each other. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah I mean, you've got, you've got to have that open line of communication. Yeah. You have to. How about you, Peter? And never give up. Doesn't matter how difficult something can be, never give up. Because the minute you say, I give up, I can't do it, you fail. And, and you're going to keep saying that because I can't do it. So I always brought up the kids is um, you set your mind to it, you will succeed. And that's even on your job. It doesn't matter how tough your job is, never ever give up until you absolutely can't do no more. But yeah. you know, the, the life that we live nowadays, it's too easy to say, I don't want to do no more. So don't give up. We have a sign that sits on, on our dash of our motorhome. I don't know if you've ever noticed it when you're in there. It says, dream it, believe it, do it. Yeah. And um, our girls use that all the time. And I mean, Peter's always been one, and, and he has a gift because 
if he puts his mind to something, he can, he'll do it. And you know, I've always said to him, not not everybody has that gift. Yeah. You know, there's some things that that I can try and try and try. I don't. I won't give up. But I can't get it perfect. Whereas, is he can, he'll find a way to get it perfect. Yeah. So, um, anything he's ever told me he's going to do, I believe he's going to do it because he'll find a way. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys being on Music awesome. Junkies today. I hope you had a good time. I had fun. Right? I thought it was really cool. That's awesome. I'm out. glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Hey junkies, thanks for tuning in today. If you like the show, obviously like it, right? If you're on YouTube, subscribe. If you want to be a junkie and be a part of the show, I would love that. Reach out to me on Instagram under music.junkies and let's have you on the show. I hope you have a great day.